Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and let's create a bright, beautiful birthday yarn for our sponsor. Happy birthday, Soraya. I really hope that you're gonna have the best birthday ever and that you love the yarn that I dye. And make sure to thank your mom for sponsoring this episode of Dye Fat Weekly for you. Today we are gonna dye 200 grams of Knit Picks Superwash Merino Twist. This is a worsted weight yarn. It is high twist and I love it. The plan today is to play with some of Soraya's favorite colors, bright pink and purple, and we are gonna layer and do some resist dyeing. The thing that I love with this particular yarn, uh, this twill yarn, is that it is super high twist. It's 100% superwash merino, and I think the high twist could add some really fun dimension. And so, oh gosh, I mean, I think, I think I wanna do some resist. You know, I think I'm gonna do two different versions of this yarn. Hold on. Today is one of those situations where I had two competing ideas and why not do both? I want to dye the yarn in two rounds. First a layer of purple, then a layer in pink. But in one of the skeins, I am gonna add some resist points for the first round, which will give us some white patches. And in the other, I'm not. So we'll have a more subtle layered colorway. And then I'll pick my favorite and send that one to Soraya. So Soraya, this will add another element of surprise if you have not yet opened up your yarn. Part of the plan is to do lower acid in the first round, so that way we get a bit more dye penetration into the fibers, and then use a higher acid to get more of a surface layer, maybe a glaze. I'm not 100% sure if we'll get a great glaze with this yarn, but we will try. I'm not 100% sure that we're gonna get a perfect glaze today. This yarn with the high twist, I think is a great gant is a great candidate for some glazed yarn. But the goal is to have a bit of fun. Okay, so let's see. Two of these ties are here just to function as an extra tie, whereas the rest of these reusable nylon zip ties are added on really tightly to be a resist. Resist points like this uh, physically prevent the yarn from entering into that center. There be, will be some variety. For example, the dye can access the yarn right here more than it can access some of this yarn over here, uh, but we will be pre-soaking this to help aid in that. And you can just see this tight, beautiful uh, bounce roundness to it with that high twist. And oh, I love this base. I want to pre-soak the yarn for at least 20 minutes in just some plain tap water. There is no acid in here yet. Uh, pre-soaking the yarn will make it easier for the dye to penetrate the fibers uh, and you can get more even coverage. You can also get some great results by adding dry yarn, but we're starting with damp today. I am going to start heating up uh, 24 cups of water in my 12 quart stainless steel pot. And to this, let's start with just four tablespoons of white vinegar. The first color we're gonna add is mostly uh, a dilution of my 1% stock solution of Derma Electric Violet. Maybe it's about a half percent stock solution now. So that would be about, that's half a cup. Okay, so that's about three quarters of a cup. Approximately 180 milliliters of approximately a half percent stock solution is around 0.9 grams of dye, which is not a lot for 400 grams of yarn. So going into the actual 1% stock solution, Let's add a quarter cup of that. So now we have about one and a half grams of dye in here. This is still not a lot of color for 400 grams of yarn, but <laughs> it is more than we had before. I gently squeezed out most of the pre-soaked water from our yarn, and we are nowhere near hot yet. I am adding the yarn and moving it through to help this color 
sort of penetrate. It's not going to penetrate those resist points I added, but I do want um, to get a reasonable tonal coverage here. Don't forget that when it comes to dyeing yarn with acid dyes, there are a few different things that affect the rate. One is acid. Uh, the more acid you have, the faster colors will strike. One is heat. The hotter things are, the faster things will strike. And then the other, well, I mean, time is a factor in there as well. By manipulating the amount of acid and heat, you can help get more solid colors or more tonal with more variation in there. So uh, I guess the other factor is the pre-soak, because if you have the dry yarn that to the pot, then the dye can't access all the yarn as quickly, um, so it'll start striking first the areas it hits first, giving you more tonal variation in your colorway. We're definitely going to have a tonal quality to our yarn. There is no question about that whatsoever. But things are going to be a little more subtle from this first round. Now we just need to wait for this to heat up. So I'll check back in in about 20 minutes. We are not yet at a simmer, but you can see that it is getting nice and steamy. I am curious. Yeah, we still have some color in there. Since we're gonna do the other layer in this pot, I am not particularly worried, um, but I wanna go ahead and add one, two, three, close to four more tablespoons of white vinegar. It's not necessary for this stage necessarily, but I'm gonna want more acid for the second round anyway, so it doesn't hurt. But I'll go ahead and wait at least another 10 minutes. I just turned off the heat and we are gonna set this yarn aside. It doesn't need to be set aside for very long, but I do want to be able to remove the resists and so therefore need the yarn to cool off enough so I can comfortably do so. Oops. And hopefully I'm not tangling things along the way. As for the dye bath itself, we are going to start prepping this for round two. I have some leftover pink that was a mixture of, I believe, some deep magenta and a blue. Uh, and again, this was about a one to one mixture with some water. So I'm adding approximately 0.6 grams of this deep color uh, total. Um, again, it's mostly the pink with just that hint of blue. I forget now if we are at nine or 10 tablespoons of white vinegar. Let's add some more. Three, four, whoops, five, six, seven. Okay, seven more tablespoons of white vinegar. The yarn is still really hot, but I think that I can manage these zip ties. Okay, there is one. Here is another. It'd be nice to add this to the dye bath while everything is still hot. There we go. Then the last one is over here. As some of these zip ties, I can use them many, many times, but when they're warm, it's actually a little easier to remove them. But you can see that some of them stop catching as well. So it's handy for using some of those older ones. But here we have the yarn. Let me see what I can do here. Okay, so we've got our two tonal purples that have light and dark patches throughout. Um, there's a bit of a shadow coming in right now, but so it's making it look a little more tonal than it really is. But then we have our purple with these white patches through it. And now we're gonna layer on the pink. The pot is still on low heat. So I'm gonna come over with my tongs and our 400 grams of warm yarn. I drained out some more liquid so it wouldn't be dripping horribly as I came over, but now I'm gonna start lowering in the 400 grams of yarn, and as I do so, I am moving it to sort of help 
the color penetrate a little more evenly, but I'm hoping that it's also going to strike pretty quickly. And so that's just another reason why I went in a little bit slow and moved it around. Again, I'm not sure if we are going to get a glazed feel. I absolutely need to work on my glazing technique. Um, that's something that I still consider myself a novice with. But I think that this yarn we're going to get is going to be really, really pretty. And now let's go ahead and wait 15 minutes. On the monitor, it looks very, very, very pink, but in person, I can see like a brighter pink right here and down there and more of a purpley pink in the middle. I think that it's hard to tell completely on camera, but this yarn feels like a celebration, which is perfect for Soraya's birthday. Okay, let's check in on this yarn. Uh, and see, most of the color has absorbed. I'm not sure if it feels glazed. It's it's hard to say. Um, certainly it is really, really pretty though. Uh, I am actually going to turn off the heat and let it cool in the dead hot. I think that probably for a true like glazed type feel, I probably would have wanted more pigment of that second color in there. Uh, we definitely have layered colors and it's all more pink than it was before. Um, but some of the subtle, like if we got a subtle layer of pink over some of that purple, that will be easier to tell once it is dry. The reason why I'm going to leave the yarn to cool off in this dye pot is that uh, if it cools, it'll absorb that subtle amount of color that's left. We don't need to add any more acid. There's plenty of acid in here. So yeah, now it's just a waiting game. Here is our beautiful yarn. I might have a few tangles in these things, but when, but if you are concerned about tangling, you just wait until the yarn is dry. It's a lot easier to resolve. And with these zip ties here, I know that uh, I should have no trouble resolving it once everything is dry. Don't worry, Soraya, I'm not giving you tangled yarn. Interestingly, I, well, I guess it's hard to make conclusions right now, but you can definitely see, uh, you can see that there's some pops and pink from where we had the resist. And I think that one came out really, really cool and it's fairly subtle, but there's definitely some more like pink and more purple moments here that are really fun. I'm now going to add I am now adding some clear dip soap from my almost empty bottle. Uh, this is one other just quick wash, but also a check for bleeding. And there's none. So I'm now gonna rinse out the soap, put the yarn through my automated spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. This yarn is so bouncy that uh, the skeins looked a bit like this once they dried, um, but Snapping it a few times helps get the skeins nice and ordered. So something that looked tangled really isn't, thank goodness. I love both of these colorways. The subtle difference from the layering the color and then these brighter pops that we got from doing that resist. Both are really fun. And oof, which one do I send to Soraya? Oh man, I can't decide which one's my favorite. I really, really like both, and it's a really close call, but I think that this, even though it's a bit subtle, but this extra surprise pop of color over here is so fun. It's fun because that little like resist pop shows like, really there is a difference between those two colors that we layered. That otherwise maybe the difference from that second layer would have felt really subtle, but I'm really happy. Layering colors like this is definitely something that I'm feeling super drawn to. I like using tonal yarn a lot. 
And this has a lot of those qualities where the differences between the colors are really small. But instead of just having some depth differences for a little bit of dimension in the stitches, there's also some hue differences in here. But those differences ultimately are pretty small. And so I think something like this would still hand up would still stand up really, really well to a more complex stitch pattern than say a more wild variegated colorway or something with extreme contrast might. Now, that being said, and I feel like this is something I'm adding more and more, if you have both of these colorways that you're gonna use together in one project, you do want to make sure to alternate skeins every couple of rounds if you don't want there to be like a difference between the two because it's possible that one might have some more bright pinks, the other might be a little more even toned. It's just the way that these differences can happen inside one pot. Soraya, happy, happy birthday. And thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I hope that you will have a ton of fun with this yarn and it is just so bouncy and soft that it would be great for really whatever you might want to use it for. This merino twist, this twill, is fastly becoming one of my favorite yarn bases. I love anything that is springy uh, and has this more twist to it. I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but the high twist gives it almost a glazed appearance in places where it's like the color just struck the outside of the strand. And so if you were to open it up, you could see a little bit of unevenness on like those plies, which is just so, so fun and cool. And this yarn base has so much potential for playing around with in the future. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, turn on those notifications by pressing, smashing that bell icon, and leave a comment below about what you thought. Which one of these colorways is your favorite? If you would like to learn more about how you as a viewer can sponsor an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, you can find the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop when slots are available. Unfortunately, slots are more limited right now, so feel free to message me on Etsy um, if you would like to discuss this further. Although, please leave messaging me on Etsy just for things that are specifically shop related. <laughs> I can't always promise a specific date, um, so that way your sponsored episode can fall at a birthday or milestone, but I am happy to try to accommodate that if I can. But it's always worth contacting me months in advance because I often have some form of my schedule planned um, pretty far out into the future. Whew, as I'm filming this, the summer is just starting. Zoom school isn't even out yet. but. I, there's so many exciting things that are coming up over the summer and I am just so excited to play with color and share this with you. This is something I'm so passionate about and it really is fun for me to share something I love to do so much with all of you. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for watching everyone.